website is reporting that the Reverend Al Sharpton, a.k.a. President Obama's number one cheerleader, and he worked as an FBI informant spying on New York mob figures back in the 1980s. And the report, which was featured on the cover of today's New York Post, said Sharpton secretly recorded conversations that he had with the mob. Earlier today, he responded to those allegations during a press conference. Take a look. I was not and am not a rat because I wasn't with the rats. I was never told I was an informant with a number. So in my, uh, in, in my own mind, I was not an informant. I was cooperating with investigations. Now, tonight, we also have gotten our hands on an HBO sports video of an undercover FBI agent acting as a drug trafficker negotiating a cocaine deal with none other than Al Sharpton himself. Take a look at this. Now that video is reportedly from 1983, and after it aired, Al Sharpton threatened to sue HBO for millions of dollars. Because he was a rat. <laughs> he was a rat bastard who got caught up, ladies and gentlemen. Now he's out there capping, caping for Joe Biden. We can't take these people serious, y'all. We can't take them serious, y'all. At this point, trains. They've been sellouts. They will always be sellouts and they will die trains being sellouts. It's what isn't on the schedule. Trains use the power. Many of us are condemned for not fighting crime. And now we're condemned for fighting crime. I was never told I was an informant with a number. So in my, uh, in, in my own mind, I was not an informant. I was cooperating with investigations. The conversations were recorded, and I would record them today if somebody threatened me. Because you was a rat. You're a known rat, dude. And you motherfucking African Americans is surrounding Al Sharpton is dinner. With a fucking rat. Reverend Al Sharpton is denying reports that he was an FBI informant. Documents on the Smoking Gun website show that Sharpton recorded conversations with New York crime bosses during the 1980s. He reportedly was known as confidential informant number seven. But Sharpton says he was a victim. He says he called the FBI after he was threatened. Sharpton admitted recording some conversations, but said he was never told he was an informant. Yeah, right. Nigga, you's a fucking rat. And you out here caping for Joe Biden. And you got some of the elderly African Americans supporting this dude, John man. Good evening to you. I'm Christine Johnson. And welcome, everyone. I'm Maurice Dubois. Those stories are straight ahead. But first, after all these years, the Reverend Al Sharpton admits he was an FBI informant. Yes, he says that he was the cat that got the rats. But others say that Sharpton's so secret life was not rat. by choice. CBS 2 political shit? reporter Marsha Kramer has the story. Michelle Obama probably never knew that one of the guests at her recent White House 50th birthday party was an FBI mafia informant who helped bring down members of the Genovese crime family. Reverend Al Sharpton, now a confidant of both the First Lady and the President and of Mayor Bill de Blasio, has his own unique take on his days as the government's confidential informant number seven. In my own mind, I was not an informant. I was cooperating with investigations. The revelations threaten to embarrass Sharpton as he kicks off his National Action Network convention this week with de Blasio and President Obama the headliners. But de Blasio, who calls Sharpton family, is sticking by his buddy. Doesn't change relationship one bit. I'm very proud to be his friend. Um, I think he he's has done a house for the city of New York and for this country. I have the That's exact why. same positive view of him I had before. 
Sharpton has been dogged for years by reports that he was an FBI informant, helping the government go after boxing promoter Don King and music executives. Now we learn he also went after mobsters, including the legendary Vincent the Chin Giganti, the so-called odd father who paraded around in his bathrobe and pajamas. Though he has ducked and dodged questions about whether he wore a wire for the feds, that wasn't possible today since a batch of government documents were made public. The conversations were recorded. And there's also the issue of how he became an informant. Some say he was pressured into it after he was caught in a drug sting. This HBO undercover sting video that aired in 2002 shows Sharpton with a cowboy hat pulled down over his bouffant hairdo. Sharpton appears to nod when an agent offers him a cut from future drug sales. But now Sharpton claims he went to the feds for protection from threats from mob-connected music executives and was asked to rat out the bad guys. They were threatening to kill me. And while the feds say his information he helped bring down guys ass. like Giganti, Sharpton says he didn't know how his information was being used. I have never met any of these guys. The guy with the pajamas, I don't walk around with guys that walk outside. I don't, I never met this guy. Well, Sharpton says he's not embarrassed by anything that he did. What he is embarrassed about, he says, is how, quote, fat he used to be now that he has reinvented himself as a skinny guy. By the way, sources say the mayor will cut the ribbon tomorrow at the start of Sharpton's three-day National Action Network convention. Christina Maurice. Well, he... Fucking rat bastard. Fucking street rat, man. Let me see something. It seems the world is changing it's faster rat, than we can keep up with. But when you're you got caught up, the car of your choice. You already know what it is. After that, when you got caught up. You were actually involved with Al Sharpton and Don King. Yes. During this time. Can you talk about that? Yeah, I had a big undercover operation on me at the time. Obviously, I didn't know it. Where um, uh, an FBI agent undercover and uh, an informant that used to work with Muhammad Ali, they were trying to target the boxing industry for illegal gain. And so they got to me somehow through somebody I knew, and they were trying to get me to set up Don King, and they were trying to put us both in a problem and see how we were fixing fights and how you know we were, were doing uh, things we shouldn't have been doing in the fighting game. And Al Sharpton, who I knew very well at the time, was my liaison between Don King and myself. And, um, you know, Don King, I mean, uh, um, Al Sharpton at the time, he was a gun for hire, you know. We, would, uh, we needed him to do some things with his own people, which he called them at the time. We hired him to do it. We used to pay him, you know. He, he was, he was uh, about the Reverend Martin Luther King, the, the Fred Hamptons, and the other brothers that Walters, got executed the guy had at in the that past. That was booking all these acts. Through these we informants, send Al, Al out house to, to meet with the act that he wanted a book, and Al would bring him to us for a price. That's how we used him. Used so, that uh, house nigga. Uh, you they used well. that okay. house nigga. And what happened with Don King? Well, they had an undercover operation on me for about eight to nine months. I eventually, but I was very leery of these guys. I was very careful how I, I worked with them. And I eventually brought them to Don King. But in the first meeting that I had with King, I said, look, I, I can only trace these guys back maybe a year. I said, so in this first meeting we had, don't say anything illegal. Play it straight. So everything across the board. They want to invest money. They'll invest it with you. We'll get into the fight game. But don't talk about anything you shouldn't be talking about. So we had the meeting. And he did it exactly like that. What happened was, and it was a big care. He called it shadow boxing. That was the, I mean, Sports Illustrated wrote it up. It was all a big thing. Uh, what happened was they tried to continue. They were trying to get the money to give to Don. It was going to be a lot of money at the time. And they had, I believe, 81 tape recordings of me. They turned it over to the U.S. attorney at the time, and none of those tape recordings uh, uh, worked to have me indicted. I didn't say anything on them that would hurt myself. So they eventually had to close it down, and it went nowhere. But the only one that got in trouble over that was Al Sharpton, because he tried to do a drug deal with the, uh, the agents. And, uh, and then he became an informant after that, 100%, no matter what he says. He was an informant. He tried to do a drug deal. They got him on tape doing the deal, the whole bit. Al Sharpton. Al Sharp. Was an informant? Absolutely. 100%. Okay. 100% informant. No if hands, or butts behind that shit. That nigga was a rat. 
flat out rap. And everybody knew it in the African American community, but yet y'all quick to call people that's not rats, rats with no proof. That's the crazy part. That's the crazy, Before crazy dad, part. Like you sit in his chair. I recently interviewed Michael Franzese, who was the highest ranking, you know, Italian mafia member to ever leave, you know, from the five families to actually leave and not go to prison or be in protective custody and actually talk about his experiences. And he said something interesting during the interview, which I didn't realize until I went back and researched it afterwards. He has some dealings with Al Sharpton. And he said that Al Sharpton actually turned into an FBI informant. But the only one that got in trouble over that was Al Sharpton, because he tried to do a drug deal with the, uh, the agents. And, uh, and then he became an informant after that, 100%, no matter what he says. He was an informant. He tried to do a drug deal. They got him on tape doing the deal, the whole bit. Al Sharpton? Al Sharpton. Was an informant? Absolutely, 100%. Okay. Did he get anyone busted? That I don't know. Uh, but, you know, there's a, lot of, uh, there's a lot of news on this. I mean, Newsday wrote a three-part series on his being, you know, Al Sharpton and getting himself in trouble. I don't know how he skated that, but that's Al. I mean, he's a good talker. He gets away with stuff. And sure enough, I found interviews where Al is admitting to this. Everybody knows this. He wore a wire and everything. Yeah. We knew this. That's what, that was the old fat Al. Old, old sweat suit wearing Al. <laughs> sweat suit. Old, 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 old cowboy with hat old, with, with the, the gold chain Al. on the outside. Remember yeah. Al with the sweat suits and the gold chain and the, and the pearl. Yeah, and the, and the wire. Yeah. <laughs> and the um, wire. <laughs> But in the black community, we've known that about Al for a long time. Like, we've, we've been talked about Al, you know, wearing wires and fucking with the feds. Okay. Like, I, I, I didn't know it's that. Not, no, everyone, everyone calls me the feds. So if, you, if you're calling me the feds and you support Al Sharpton, then there's something wrong with you. Okay. <laughs> because me, I don't Because he's really wires. the feds. Like, he really. <laughs> Facts, bro. Oh, wire. I don't have a wire in my beard. Says Vlad. <laughs> but these old house niggas still supporting Vlad. I mean, from your point of view, what does the black community think of, of Al Sharpton these days? Because he continued oh, to he be telling us. You know, a known figure. Yeah, I mean, Obama so met he's him. Good. Because, Man, a rat not, is a rat. Because he's put himself to the point where, in white people's eyes, he has power. I believe in black people's eyes, right now, Al's a non factor. You see, so there's not a lot of black leadership right now. You understand? Um, so Al is not somebody that we're necessarily, you know what I mean, out here ready to follow. He just attaches himself to so many different things. And so when something goes on, you'll see he's there. But it's not like, it's not like Al can organize a march today and it's going to be like 50,000 people marching behind Al. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> like, Al would come to the march, though, that has that's already organized with 50,000. And since he's known, they're going to put him up towards the front. And, and it'll look like, you see what I'm saying? But he don't really have that type of power in the black community right now. But I believe the white people feel he does. Um... That's a fact. Fuck Al. He's a fucking rat. He's been a rat. Always will be a rat. And he's out capping for Joe Biden, slow Joe Biden, because that's Obama right hand man. Understand what I'm saying? That's Obama right hand man, that old rat bastard. Any yo taxes. Any old the taxes, Al Sharpton. Al Sharpton old taxes. The Reverend Al Sharpton has emerged over the past decade as perhaps the nation's most prominent civil rights leader, but he still carries baggage from his nigga. early days as a fire-breathing agitator. 
Government records obtained by the Associated Press indicate that Sharpton and his business entities owe nearly $1.5 million in overdue taxes and penalties. Sharpton's organization, the National Action Network, says not so. The numbers that, you know, that were reported, uh, I think, within the Associated Press are, you know, are inaccurate and are being disputed. Charlie King is the interim executive director of Sharpton's network. He was hired to help organize the growing non- He was hired to lie for him. With any government agency that has... We know you house niggas. Look at your wig. Back, it's crooked. ...and how to move forward working together to resolve those uh, outstanding disputes. Specifically at issue, Sharpton's own debts include more than $350,000 in New York City income tax and almost a million dollars in unpaid federal income tax. His for-profit company, Reverend Al That's why you out there capping, y'all. ...another $175,000 in delinquent taxes. You know, there's nothing new. I mean, the facts have been there for a while, and... The only difference right now is, is the timing. Sharpton claims the government and the media are trying to bring attention to his personal issues while he conducts a national campaign to protest police brutality. The fight by Sharpton stems from an incident in New York where a young black man was shot more than 50 times by NYPD officers while leaving a nightclub. Sharpton brushes off the inquiries as a kind of annoyance that civil rights figures have come to expect from the government. Friend and former New York Mayor Ed Koch says he supports Sharpton, but doesn't believe that the civil rights leader is being targeted. Because he's the number one house nigga, of course. You... If he's the subject of a tax audit, I would not consider that to be discrimination. As for the alleged owed taxes... Since we're making sure that, you know, the government wants to make sure that they get it right, we want to make sure that we get it right. Mike Gracia, The Associated Press. That coon ass nigga Jesse Jackson. Oh, another house nigga. There's a known rat. I've been stabbed. I look. What do you got to say about Biden? The same motherfucker. Have you ever wondered why before? we are paid every two weeks Let's see what when you got we to work say every day? About With Biden. Earning, you can access your pay. Uh, Reverend Al, uh, let's talk about your weekend in South Carolina. How's Jim, first of all? How's Jim Clyburn doing? He's doing very well. He had a very, very successful weekend. His annual fish fry was off the charts. God, fish fry. <laughs> now, what kind of fish was it? Because oh, I'll tell fish. you, in Northwest Florida, we'd always have fried mullet. What, 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 are they, what do they serve at Jim's uh, fish fry? He had a lot of uh, whitings and fried fish. I got in very late, but it was... Uh, Seemingly, everyone was satisfied, and uh, and he had a more than uh, capacity crowd. Let's put it that way. Well, Rev, with your felt figure, you probably were eating <laughs> tofu in the corner, not idea. letting anybody <laughs> see see the, the tofu salad you were having. Uh, I don't even know if there's such a thing as tofu yes, there is. salad. It's delicious. Really? You'll have one today. Uh, Those are these old house yes, niggas show every teeth in their mouth when it comes to the white man. Bring it on. And a PBR, even though we don't drink. So, Rev. Um, uh, fascinating weekend, and you sure had a fascinating interview with Joe Biden. What did you learn? How was your gut? Well, Joe Biden had said to me uh, months ago that he would do his first national cable interview with me, so this was already set. I wanted to bring to him my concerns that I disagreed with his language, so I understood his point in terms of using the language of boy and son because of the racial sensitivity that I and, and many had about the term boy, and especially in a racial context, and about normalizing segregationists. Yes, if you're engaged in trying to get something done, you're going to have to work with people that you absolutely disagree with. But don't normalize them and civilize them. And I tried to get him to see that and deal with that. And he said he understood it, but he would not apologize for it. Where we differ. He's not going to apologize to you old house A lot of confusion that I've heard is this is not generational. John Lewis and others that defend him are 15 years older than me. I'm uh, Cory Booker is is closer to my age than I am to theirs. But I think that it's a matter of function. Some people fight.
fight hard and try to get things done and have to deal with people that <laughs> oppose them. Other people take these ivory tower analyst views and become purists because they've never had to try to engage and get things done. Now, can I just say something? Right now, really hurtful. Can I just say something? Now, Morning Joe, we try not to be personal and yeah, watch personal civil, attacks. And civil. you start talking about ivory towers never having to really get anything done. Poor Eddie Glad Jr. Yes. He knows you're talking about yeah, him. Yeah. That really hurts no, his I didn't even know. I didn't even know. I didn't know Eddie was there. Uh, uh, I'm no, talking no. about the no, we're, we're, we're joking. Eddie, actually, when you started saying that, he was joking. You kind of rolled his eyes. Oh, boy. So the house niggas up there cooning and showing every teeth in their mouth, like I always tell y'all. <clears throat> These old house niggas. <laughs> Drop it about housing. And what Oprah got to say about that? Black Americans are exposed to 50% of Oprah, you already know you're a coon. Over one what um, Black Al Sharpton talking about. So yeah. were you for a very long time an angry black man? Oh, I was very angry. And no. I was angry not only at society, I was angry at my father. I was angry at some of my mentors. I felt, you know, if I had lived a middle class life and then went to the hood, I might not have been as angry, but I felt robbed. Mm. I felt that I had the right life and y'all took it from me for no reason. Mm -hmm. And then humiliated my mother. My mother went from having a new Cadillac every year to scrubbing floors so that I'd have a suit to wear to church on Sunday. I was mad about that. Mm -hmm. I was mad about that. <laughs> and some of that anger is what we saw in your protest. A lot of that anger it was exercising protest. Yeah. And exercised in a lot of things in life. Because I never stopped and really analyzed and admit to myself, where's all this anger? I mean, when you wake up mad. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't even happen yet. You're just mad when you wake up. You look at the pillar mad. I mean, <laughs> at some point you got to stop and say, what, what am I so angry about? Yeah. Because you never really dealt with this pain inside. Because mm. you was an old house, nigga. That's why, how you're so mad. <laughs> Al was uh, Trump right hand man. Let me see if I can find that. Al and um, Donald Trump. That was his right hand man. You know? That was his right hand man. I don't know what happened. But we're going to find out. We most definitely going to find out, y'all. FBI informant exposed sting operation targeting innocents. See, Al. Al. Let's get to it, y'all. Yesterday, as I was scrolling, we're gonna go right here, y'all. Let's get into it, y'all. Let's break Find some more news, y'all. Told y'all we got the facts up on this joint. Total line and more. Him and Trump was cool. Wow. Yesterday, as I was scrolling on Instagram, I came across a video compilation of Reverend Al Sharpton, and it was comprised of his most iconic moments. And within that uh, montage, if you will. I saw a video that really caught my eye. Check it out. An indictment in Manhattan that accuses him of diverting hundreds of thousands of dollars to his personal use after using fraud, grand larceny, and false business records to solicit.
funds from such diverse contributors as Don King, the boxing promoter, and Don Trump, the billionaire. Sharp so as you saw there, was uh, 1989 was the year he was being indicted on stealing money from uh, people like Don King and Donald Trump. And we're going to get into that in just a few. But I want to read why he was arrested back in 1989. The Reverend Al Sharpton was arrested yesterday on charges of stealing at least $250,000 from an organization he set up almost 20 years ago with promises to help young people. Mr. Sharpton, who is 34 years old, was charged in an indictment obtained by State Attorney General Robert Abrams that listed 67 counts of grand larceny, falsifying business records, and scheming to defraud. Also goes on to say the indictment in Manhattan, which was handed up Wednesday and made public yesterday, grows out of an investigation into the National Youth Movement, which Mr. Sharpton founded in 1971 when he was in high school. From January 1985 to January 1988, the indictment contends Mr. Sharpton improperly represented the organization as having nonprofit status and solicited contributions in excess of $1,000 each on its behalf from various businesses and individuals, including the Coca-Cola Company, the boxing promoter Don King, and Donald Trump. Now, I should also say that he was acquitted, found not guilty of doing that. Now, of course, he at the time and his lawyers accused uh, Mr. Abrams, who was the prosecutor, special prosecutor appointed uh, for his case, accused him of doing a witch hunt because before that, Reverend Al Sharpton was very demonstrative about what happened to Tawana Brawley, a uh, young black girl who allegedly was assaulted by a group of white men who later on they said was not telling the truth, so it depends on who you believe, but the white boys were uh, exonerated, if you will, not even really even brought up on charges or any of that kind of stuff. So Al Sharpton was saying at the time, that was kind of like some get back for him defending Tawana Brawley. All right, so let's go past all of that. Let's come to 2024. We know that Reverend Al Sharpton is very loud about his disdain for that uh, former president, Donald Trump. He has a, a weekend show on MSNBC where, of course, now it is election season. He says a lot of things about Donald Trump that we should not be voting for him. He's a bad dude, for lack of better words, right? Now, not too long ago, I had an opportunity to call up Reverend Al Sharpton on his Sunday morning uh, radio show. And I told him I was voting for the couch. And he got really upset with me, right? He hung up on me and everything. But... I'm saying all that to say, y'all, we really need to be studying the history of these people who are now uh, walking tall and talking tough about certain people, places, and things. Let's go into their past and see, well, what, what was you like before? Because was Donald Trump a bad dude when he was taking money from him? Right. Was he bad for right. black people when he was taking money from him for his black organization to help black youth? Was he bad then or is he bad now because you playing for the Democrats, right? I'm sure you, uh, Al Sharpton is getting a bag with the Democrats too. Now, you know, Al Sharpton has had a problematic passage. You know, it was said to be an FBI uh, agent or informant, I guess I should say. He says that he wasn't, but there's proof that kind of says that he was. So anyway, uh, again, we need to be very careful of the people that we listen to. Because how is Donald Trump a bad dude now, but he wasn't bad when you was getting money? Now, listen, I know people change, but that almost goes with the same argument when you hear people uh, defend Biden uh, about the things that he did in the past, especially be a lot of our people, and I just really don't understand it. When you say, hey, you know, y'all remember when he wrote those uh, crime bills that locked up generations of black people? Some of our folks say, well, he's changed. He's not that way anymore. It's like, is he? How you change and you ain't said you were sorry or changed none of the things you did. But anyway, I digress. Back to Al Sharpton, who was faking the funk now that I guess he's getting a big old giant bag to talk bad about the same man that he was getting a bag from back in the 80s. So anyway, y'all tell me what you think of that. And for more insightful commentary, please subscribe to this channel and Facts. the channel. To <laughs> Facts. I mean, the proof is out there, y'all. The proof is in the pudding, ladies and gentlemen. The proof is in the pudding. And like she said, y'all got to watch these niggas, y'all. Throw y'all fight behind and support. Because 
all of a sudden Donald Trump is bad for black folks, but when he was getting the bag from Donald Trump, it was all good in the hood. You see what I'm saying? It was all good in the hood. And that's a fact. So what happened? That's why I'm trying to say what happened within now to now. What they gave him a bigger bag? Trying to get out of the joke. What the, 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 the Dixiecrats gave him a bigger bag? Understand what I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen? So, yes, we have to watch these people who they pounce in front of us. Straight up. That's a 100% fact. I told y'all that. That nigga's a house nigga, a coon, a rat. And he said, here, wear the wire again. It's in the video. If who those who didn't hear it, rewind the video back and listen to it. He said, if he have to wear a uh, wire again. He will wear a wire again. He, he's a known rat. That's why they love him. <clears throat> That's a 100% fact. So I just wanted to come up and dissect a little bit into Al Sharpton foolishness and rhetoric. That I've been trying to tell y'all about. see what else I can find on this rat bastard. But if not, we're going to end the video here, y'all. We gonna end the video here. We don't believe shit Al Sharpton say. We know he is, he's a known rat you know the in the community. That. He's not to be trusted. And we're not following him. And he's not the black community leader anymore. His time was up in the 70s. Alright? Alright, white folks that's out there thinking Al Sharpton got the black community in his pocket. Listen. He don't.